Hi, welcome back to Just Say Julie. Wait, wait, wait. Um, I'm doing my okay. hair. Does it look weird? I feel like it looks weird on camera. But no. <sighs> no, it didn't look weird? Not really. Not really? What the hell is that supposed to mean? J, J, J is for Julie. You are the voice that we need. We L loved you in the movies. I want to hear you speak every week. She's the hottest little diva with a henna weave. Just say Julie. That's she. Wah, wah, wah. Can't look Can't weird because it's like so okay, pulled well, there up. There you go. There you go. Okay. I took it out. Okay. Just move on. Can I start? Can I start? I don't care. Okay. Um, in a bad mood. I know. Why are you in a bad mood? I'm just in a bad mood. Cause, why? Because I think Luke's gone. He's been gone for a week. He's going to be gone for five more weeks. That's annoying. Yeah, that's annoying. I'm running out of money. That's really annoying. I got fired again. Yeah, we're going to talk like about the fourth that. Time. We're going to talk about that. That was going to be our theme tonight, jobs, because Benny got fired again mm -hmm. from the Mirror Factory. Um, explain why you got fired. I yeah. got promoted from pure data entry to a project manager. And I had, like, went into a meeting and I was like, you know, I accept this job and it's going to be great. And they were like, yeah. And I was like, what's the pay raise? And they were like, there is none. And I was like, <laughs> I'm making minimum wage. Like, you, I would rather just stay doing what I'm doing. Then. Right. Why would I Instead like... Instead of have more work. Yeah, why would I like sign on to like learn a whole new job where I'm doing significantly more? <laughs> and they, just... they didn't understand that, right? No, and they kept saying, I would say like, you know, I'm not going to accept the job offer. And they go, but you're project manager. And I was like... No. <laughs> and then they would say, but you're a project manager. And I'd be like, no, I don't accept. Did you ever ask them, why do you think saying that over and over is going to convince me? Because it only happened like three times. Oh, okay. So like All right. in a row. All right. And this is ridiculous because the job was fairly simple. Fairly simple? Right. It would require to butt one brain cell. Okay, but she mastered it quickly. And the other people there were astounded. I guess they were all astounded enough to say, she's smart, let's make her project manager. Um, and then then they went, that's Obi playing with his skunk. I think they fired her because they realized that there's disadvantages to having a smart employee. They can see what's going on. They know where the money is going. So they went, oh my God, Obi's like, he's like trying to tear the wall down with his teeth. Sit down. I just don't know if we went in the other room if he'd stop after a while. He probably will stop in a okay. second. Okay. You understood where everything was going, the money, and they're like, Ugh, we can't cheat, we can't. I know you, you don't want to put that in. I guess. I'm not probably going to put that in. Okay. Just because I wouldn't want them, for whatever reason, find this and then... But also what I love is that you think they're going to be watching the Just Say Julie podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to happen. Oh, by the way, please subscribe. Please subscribe. We don't know why you're supposed to subscribe, but it's yeah. apparently a really good thing on YouTube. Yeah. We get, like, we, we it makes us more popular or something. So please subscribe. And that was our theme song by James Bradford really wonderful we really appreciate that he did that um, what order do you think i'm editing this in <laughs> is what i want to know i'm putting this in the way that it is and i don't know how you wanted me to edit that i have literally no idea how you thought i was gonna edit that i'm just spitballing here <laughs> i'm spitballing okay i don't know uh, how you're gonna edit it either but good luck <laughs> Um, anyway, uh, she has no job right now. Um, and this is how many times you've been fired. <laughs> Julie, don't put me on blast like this. Well, it's, it's kind of funny. Okay, I got fired in, <coughs> when I lived in Portland for the pandemic. I worked at the coffee shop for two days. I got fired. <laughs> then I started. What was the reason? Then I got fired again a few months later from a nanny job. They, I went into work one day. Uh-huh. And I'm watching a baby. And 
I people get leave there. their child with her. Okay, go Yeah, on. they were leaving their infant with me. I get there, and the mom looks at me, and she goes, and how about you do the dishes today? And I was like, <laughs> and I do the dishes every single time before I leave, because that's, like, part of right, what right. I do. And I was like, yeah, sure. I do them all the time. And she goes, you didn't last night. And I was like, I did. Why is that a crime? They said that when the baby goes to sleep, they want to pretend like he doesn't exist anymore. And by leaving the messes that I left, that makes that makes them go, oh, we have a baby. You should report them. To who? To the police. <laughs> For what? Child negligence. They want to have an invisible child. And it, just, <laughs> it just doesn't work that way. No, it doesn't. What a nightmare. Okay, what's job number two? That one was. Okay, what's job number three? <laughs> well, job number three, I'm counting as a firing. I got hired at a bakery the morning of my shift before it. They texted me and said, actually, we don't really need anyone anymore. Okay. So don't bother. So it wasn't like you'd gone in and screwed up. Yeah. You just Like the fired. other ones. Yeah, like the other ones. Okay, job four. Mirror factory. The mirror factory because she was too smart. I mean, that's not what they said, but that's what I'm saying. They said that I was combative and a nuisance to the office. That's really funny to think of yourself as a nuisance. I wanted you know? to say, I wanted to say, do you know what the word combative means? Or nuisance. <laughs> Explain those. No, they probably looked that up in the dictionary before they called you in. I think that it made the guy who fired me feel powerful when he fired me. That sure. was the vibe I got, that he sure. was like... I had been saying, like, listen, I don't want to work. I don't want to drive out here. I can do this job from home. And I think he wanted to be like, you don't think, like, you're all that in a bag of chips. And it's like, I don't think I'm all that in a bag of chips. I just don't want to commute here anymore. Oh, that's Luke. Can I? I'll, I'll tell yeah. him to call me back. At the yeah. End of it. yeah. Hi, Luke. She's talking to her boyfriend right now. Call me in 20, okay? And if you don't, then. Isn't um, that cute? I'm going to be so mad. So Smoke adorable. is going to come out of my ears. Where's my boyfriend? He's not calling. Yeah, I did. I'm jealous. Okay, yeah, call me in 20. I haven't had sex in five years. Love you, bye. <laughs> Hello. Hi. <laughs> um, okay, so waiting. that's your that's your job, thanks. Um, but, you know, everybody cool gets fired. That's a That's a thing. Are you, are you just saying that? No, I've been fired. <gasps> I've been fired. My first job. Well, you know what? I think I quit my first job, honestly. I can't remember the end of it. I remember the beginning. I was like 15, and I saw an ad in the paper to be like the receptionist at an air conditioning company. And I went in, and this guy hired me, this toad of a man. And I'm working there, and then a couple of days in... He like hugs me and it's so gross. Like he is a toad person. And, um, <laughs> toad person. A toad person. And I'm like, I did not know what to do. At 15, you don't know what to do. So I think I, I think I told my mom and she said, you better quit, which was great. I mean, I was yeah. so confused that he, you know, did that, you know, sexually harassed me on day three or two. And I didn't know what was happening. So anyway, um, that was my... Poor baby Julie. I know. It was, it was really terrible because, you know, I don't think guys understand how hideous things like that are. Like, unwanted yeah. hugs or gropes. I mean, it's or so... Kisses. I mean, they know it's bad, but I don't know if they know the level it's bad. No, they don't. They don't know the level. Um, because they don't ever feel vulnerable day to day like that. Not in the same way because they're bigger. Yeah. Um, my second job was at Jack in the Box. Wait, you were a hostess at Jack in the Box? No, no I was like a, a cashier, like a person who takes the money. Oh, okay. Never I was mind. a person, uh, uh, well, I guess that's a cashier. Yeah. I mean, you know, in Jack in the Box. Um, anyway, so I thought, okay, this will be fun. You know, I've never had a job like this. I like the food. So I go in, and on the first day, I meet these two guys who work behind in the fryer section. And they are idiots. And they're both like, you don't know who Beavis and Butthead are, do you? I do. Okay, they were exactly Beavis and Butthead. Amazing. And like, they go, <laughs> no, and they go, whatever you do, don't eat the pickles. And I'm like, why? And they go, we peed in the pickle barrel. 
And I'm like, oh my God. And of course I didn't know what to do. I mean, I didn't eat the pickles, but like, do I tell anybody? I mean, like, it was so awful. And they thought that was hilarious. And then they would also do things like take the hamburger patties, put fireworks in them, and explode them on the roof. So there were pieces of meat <laughs> hanging down in the back. And um, they thought that was hilarious. And I think they got fired before. Uh, before. Yeah. yeah. They were so stupid. It was, but I mean, in a way I was delighted by, I mean, to really work with Beavis and Butthead is pretty great, right? And there was this other girl who was the manager and she was really, she had problems with everything. That's not, that's not right. You know, like hmm. she was awful. So, um, and I, you know, you think like, okay, that's great. I get to work around French fries and onion rings and hamburgers. I can eat them, you know. And after you've had a certain amount, it's so grotesque. And my complexion got really bad just because there's grease in the air, in the air, and it's clinging to you. It's in your clothes. And I don't eat, I don't remember the endings of these jobs. I think I, I don't know if I got fired, but I, I maybe school started, I don't know. But I was, that was a terrible job. Hmm. And it, you know, soured my, my feeling of being a worker for sure. So that was a job that I had. Most of my jobs in my life have been writing or performing, which is great, even though they're not all great jobs. I mean, some of them are really hard. When I did summer stock, um, we got paid really crap. And you just had, you had to live in... A hotel with the other summer stock workers. I mean, it was fun though too because everybody's the same age, and we were doing Oklahoma and um, My Fair Lady and Butterflies Are Free. So it was it had a magical thing to it. That was really fun, but you could pay nothing. I don't know how they can do that, but that's what they do to performers. Um, it's weird because performers can make nothing, and then you get into this category where you're paid a lot, but there's no. It just can fluctuate yeah. all over the place, you know. And there's a minimum that you can get for working on things that they have to pay you. But, you know, if they really want you and it's a network thing or a studio thing, you can negotiate for the money you get, which is the best. It's it's hard, though. Show business is hard. But my other job, I was worked as a waitress a lot of times. or a co- I like being a cocktail waitress or waitress hmm. because... Like when I was in San Francisco in acting school, I was a cocktail waitress a bunch of times. I liked it because, first of all, carrying drinks is not heavy. Mm-hmm. You know, like a waitress, that was like working out to me. It was so hard. But a cocktail waitress, it's light. And you people tip you if you are like nice or flirtatious or you get tipped really well. And you can make a certain amount of money pretty fast. And it's very social like that aspect yeah. of it. I worked at Bush Gardens. Do you know Bush Gardens? Never heard of it. Okay, Bush Gardens. <laughs> What's you know, that you know the well cuz I think everyone's heard of it. Anheuser-Busch that beer. They have like a an amusement park. They had one. Okay. Um they did and I worked there. And it was at the amusement park? No, yes. Yes, I was in the in LA? S- yeah. I was working in the snack bar of the amusement park and it was super fun because it was all people my age and, you know, we deep fry things we weren't supposed to deep fry and everybody was really nice. I liked it. I liked just for the social aspect of it. Being a waitress always, for me, it kind of has that quality. Like you can find someone you really like that you can make fun of the whole thing with, Hmm. you know, You, you do not agree. I've never worked as a waitress. What? Yeah. Well, you have to try that and get fired from that job. That's going to be great. Oh, it's too... Ex- like, I, I think I'm just going to not work anymore. Well, that that's very brave of you. <laughs> A lot of people oh, have decided that after the pandemic. That's too exhausting. I, I know. I worked in a juice bar with Charlie, and, and there was vitamins, and we stole vitamins. I know. Julie. That was terrible. I was very young. and Karma. Well, I think I've paid for it. There's been a lot of bad things. <laughs> so I don't think that was right. That wasn't right. So yeah, I, I know that. Apologize to the fans. I apologize to everyone. And I remember the guy's name even, Dwight. I'm sorry, Dwight. I, you know, was a young, struggling 
acting student and I stole some vitamins. You needed those vitamins. I needed those vitamins really bad. Um, and then we got paid at ACT for being in the chorus. In the you know you're you're a third year student hmm. and you get paid for being a chorus member, which is funny because it's such a thankless job. Yeah. You know I was one of Desdemona's handmaidens in Othello, and they had this hat. They'd made this hat for me. Do you know that play, Othello Shakespeare? No. Shakespeare. Um, didn't you say you hate Shakespeare? Probably. Okay. That's so intellectual of you. Um, it, okay, this is the, they, they had made a hat that went out the back that stuck out like an alien head, like an alien brain. <laughs> so we all had like alien brains. It was horrible. And then I was a troll in Pier Gint, which is by Henrik Ibsen, and we were trolls. And one time I was goofing around backstage so I missed my entrance. And I was like, I mean, that's like the, you can't do that, you know, at, at ACT. It's American Conservatory Theater. So I'm like, what do I do? What do I do? So I just ran out there, like, randomly. And the trolls were doing something else. And I got in a lot of trouble for that. But, you know, it's so boring that it was hard. I was spacing out backstage yeah, going. Yeah, because you didn't care. You didn't You're care. You're like, I'm a troll. I'm a troll. Literally a troll with troll makeup. I had no lines. You just are, like, behind everybody going, like, having emotions, you know, and dancing around. It's so stupid. So um, that was that was a job I had. I guess this is turning into shitty jobs, <laughs> right? Because I've had really good jobs, too. But hmm. these are the shitty jobs. And then I worked at The Ginger Man, which um, was a, a restaurant in Beverly Hills run by Carol O'Connor, who was Archie Bunker. Do you know him? No. Okay. No Archie Bunker. Uh, most of them out there probably do know who Archie Bunker was. It was this wonderful TV series on in the 70s. I think it was the 70s. And um, he was this gruff, racist, prejudiced character. Really funny. So I worked there as a hostess. And that was a super fun job because I could get drunk while I was working. The bartenders would make you anything you wanted. And so I would I would get Irish coffees because, you know, it has coffee and alcohol. So it would keep you awake, but you'd be drunk. So that was really fun. And then people tip you just for seating them. Yeah. Which is like insane. I mean, that's my job. I'm supposed to seat them, but they'll give you money. Your and job I'm, is to be hot as a hostess. I I guess so. I met so many actors there. I met Bill Murray. I met, well, I met Steven uh, Spielberg and his then wife. Um, mm. I met all of, not Stevie Nicks, but the rest of Fleetwood Mac. Whoa. The Beach Boys would come in there. Oh, uh, James Woods. Um, there's just so many people. Like it was yeah. one of those Beverly Hills places that people went to. So it was really fun because you, the money wasn't bad, but, and I could get drunk while I was working. <laughs> you can't say that about every job. No. Right? You couldn't do that if you're a nanny, I don't think, or you shouldn't. So those are, um, those are my memorable bad jobs. Cute. Or not even bad, just jobs that I had. I mean, I thought the ginger man was really fun, even though they did fire me. What did they you did get fired fire me? For? Yeah, because that was right when I started working as an actress. I started getting jobs, and I'd go, I can't come in today because I have an audition, or you know, I got a part in this, so I'm gonna be gone. And the fact that I was working at being an actress, they realized that wasn't. Yeah. And the guy was nice about it. He goes, I know that's what you want to do, so I know you don't want to be a hostess, so I'm gonna have to let you go. I mean, he was really nice. Yeah. So I'm like, you're right. I'm gonna. I'm just going to be an actress. So yeah. that was it. Hmm. So that was in all a good experience. Yeah. That sounds yeah. like it. Do you remember any of your other jobs? Yeah. I was a, I was, worked at a smoothie place when I was a teenager and uh -huh. I got sexually assaulted. Why does that happen to young girls? Why? It's like Psychosville. What happened? He would grab our asses like while we we're making smoothies. And who was this guy? Describe him. Describe him he physically. He was a fat version of the guy who's on The Bachelor right now. <laughs> like, he looked like, like he would have been hot when he was, like, oh, younger. Oh, right. Like, he was Fat Clayton? Yes, Fat okay. Clayton. He was probably in his 30s, and all of us were, like, 16-year-olds. Oh, my God. And see, like, that was a time when that... 
you can't really complain about it. It was then. pre Me Too, and it was yeah. basically like if you don't want to get your ass grabbed, you should just quit your job. Quit your job, or just don't have this job because that's what's gonna happen. Yep. Oh my god, see, like the air conditioner guy did that to me too, and he was like a fat guy. Yeah. That was yeah, was hugging me, and I'm like, I guess I don't know. It's maybe guys who are having trouble getting women, and they go, "I'm the boss. I can do what I want." I don't know. I it's guess. really gross. I think you have to be pretty sick. You do have to pretty because you know you're doing a power thing. Yeah. The person wants the job. They can't really run away or leave, and they can't complain. So, um, I don't know. That's really awful. Yeah. Then I worked when I was older. uh, Oh, I worked at a burger place for one day, and I thought it was so gross that I quit that day. Wow. Um, Then I worked as a barista for a couple years. Oh, a couple years. Like a year and a half. That's longevity for you. (laughs) It really is. Um, Where'd you do that? Uh, Blue Bottle Coffee. That's cool. Yeah. Did you like it? I actually really did like it, except for, honestly, like a year and a half in... My neck started to hurt so bad from it. What? Because you're always, all day, your neck is down while you're pouring drinks. Oh, wow. So really, so baristas really, like, get messed up bodies from do what they, they do. Do they all get that, like, weird neck thing? Yes. Do they ever get workman's comp? Um, I think when I worked, there was one guy on worker's comp who had to do chiropractor appointments and physical therapy. Wow. I mean, I never thought about that on any of the dumb jobs I ever had. Yeah. But it's such a good idea. You know, free physical therapy. It's yeah. pretty great. Okay, so you did that. Yeah, and then I quit because I had wanted to film this short film and it was going to take a few days and I couldn't take the days off. So I was just like, peace. And they were really supportive and they were they wanted me to like make it. Like they were like, See, Go isn't out that in the sweet? World. There's people like that. They're like, Oh, look at you, you're so talented and yeah. young and Oh, I worked at the Magic Pan. Do you know what that is? No. They make crepes. Oh my god. Okay. I want the summer at ACT, we all decided we were this girl Marianne. She goes, Y'all should come out to my house and we'll do a video project this summer. So, you know, all these actors, we go, Okay. We go out there, there's almost there's no video project. And we're kind of stuck there, even though we're kind of doing a video project. So I had to get a job, and I got a job at this place, The Magic Pan. And that, they make crepes. They were uh, a franchise thing where you'd see it. I don't think they are anymore. But it was like different flavor crepes, you know, which are kind of gross in a way. They're like a pancake with cream sauce in it and, you know, different flavors. So I worked there, and then I had decided this weird thing, that I was going to be really healthy. So I didn't eat the crepes, and I I got this book. I don't know where I got it. some health food store. To be super healthy, you should only eat fruits fruits and vegetables. No protein, no grains, nothing else. So I'm like, yeah, that sounds right. Love it. (laughs) So I started doing that. Only fruits and vegetables. And I got so freaking skinny... And I was getting weaker and weaker, and I'm having to carry these crepe pans. And then school started, so I came home, and I remember just, I was like laying in bed, just going, I can't even get up. (laughs) And I just had this flash that I go, I'm anemic, I need liver. So I kind of struggled my way to the store and got a bunch of chicken livers and made them. And the weird thing is, because I hadn't had any meat or protein for three months, the whole summer, I ate that and I go, oh, this is what I feel like. This is me. Because I was feeling like this just weird, the way you sometimes think vegetarians seem to be. Yeah. Like just like, I don't have much personality because I'm so weak. So that's what was happening to me. Yeah. And um, that's hilarious. I know. I know. So then I'm like, okay, I'm never doing that again. Yeah. And I talked to this nutritionist who said, I said, why can't I do that? She goes, a lot of people can't be vegetarians. You know, even if you ethically want to be, your body doesn't that do that well. So hmm. I don't do that well being a vegetarian. I, I just, don't do that well either, but no. I do I do not eat that much meat. No, me either. I try to eat as little as possible, sort of just enough to not feel like I'm going to drop dead. You know, because it gives you, it does give you iron and B12 and all those things. And um, But some people are fine without that. Yeah. Like my first husband lived on like, you know, fruits and berries, and he'd be just fine. Hmm. And I'd be like, 
what is that all about? He was kind of an idiot, though, so hmm. maybe if he'd eaten a burger, it might have been more fun. And my son doesn't eat meat anymore. Oh, yeah. Right? Which is weird. Maybe and he will one day if his girlfriend eats meat. If his girlfriend eats meat. I don't know. He's trying it. He says every so often he'll eat it, so I don't mm. know. He's really trying to be a vegetarian, and when he comes home, I try to support him. There's something beeping. It goes... Okay. If you were to come up with your dream job... What would it be? It would be an acting job where it's regular days and times where I get paid millions of dollars (laughs) and I feel like what what the show is is like powerful and valuable. That's beautiful. My perfect job would probably be a show, like a TV show, where I have a really funny part, but I'm not on constantly. Hmm. Because that's, I've done that. It's really hard. It's yeah. really exhausting. And you feel dead by the end of the day. So, but you know how some, there's certain characters that kind of blow in and they're really funny and yes. then they leave and then you get paid millions of dollars? Yeah. That's probably my favorite. And I would also like to be in a movie with Meryl Streep, hmm. um, Melissa McCarthy. Hmm. Um, who else do I absolutely love? That might be it. Hmm. I think that's great. Yeah. Have you made like a vision board of this? No, but I'm plan on it. I'm gonna make a vision board. Because you could totally figure out something to write with the all three of you guys. That would be so amazing. You could do like the new nine to five. That would be great. Isn't that, that be great? I mean, that would be amazing. Because I love both of them. They're yeah. so. Like, my favorite movie is Devil Wars Prada. Yeah. And Melissa McCarthy, I'm not sure what, maybe, I don't know, Bridesmaids, maybe. I mean, she's so funny and everything. Yeah. So it's hard to pick one, but she's a genius. She's totally a genius. She is, they right? They both are, in their own ways. Oh, yeah, they're both geniuses, you know. And yeah. um, that would be my dream job. I love it. I know, right? There's no men involved. <laughs> Thank you. You've been watching Just Say Julie. It's been so much fun. And I want to show you my jacket made by a fan of the original show. I completely forgot I had it. And look at this. Wah, wah, wah.